Alright, hey everybody, welcome to Stellaris, the epic new 4X strategy simulation game from Paradox. Um, it's time to don our safety goggles and dial up the particle accelerator to max as we take our first tentative steps into the universe of Stellaris. So, what we first want to do is create our new empire. Now, I've messed around with this for a couple of hours last night just to get a feel for it. Um, it's pretty cool. Maybe a bit slow for some of you, but I hope you're going to enjoy it. So, first of all, like I said, we're going to choose our... Create a new empire, so our species. What do we want them to look like? Now, you've got a choice between mammalian, reptilian, avian, arthropoid, molluscoid, and fungoid. I thought it might be fun to play as, like, this mushroom type dude. The fungoid mushroom. So, I'm going to choose him. Now we need to give him a name. What should we call him? Maybe... Space Mushroom? Space mushroom. That sounds good to me. Plural space mushrooms? <laughs> I don't know. And the adjective. What can we do from that? Generate adjective. That'll do. Space mushroom. Sweet. Next up, we can have a list. We can have a name for our ship. What should we call our ship? The Grand Space Mushroom. That'll do. Grand Skalski. Grand Iwamoto. Oh dear, look, you've got all these example names, leaders names, planet names, fleet names. Cool. Arthropoid. So human one. That'll do. Grand. Not sure what else I can do there. So we've got some trait points that we can now spend. So this is where we want to find out how we want our our space mushroom to look. I mean, not to look, how to, you know, how it's going to be. So we've got agrarian. So this species has a deep connection to the land and make expert farmers and gardeners. That would kind of make sense for a space mushroom, right? Well, let's take a look at what else we've got available. We've got thrifty, industrious, intelligent. Should we be an intelligent space mushroom? That gives us plus 10 engineering output, physics output, and society output. Or natural engineers. Natural physicists. What's this one? Non-adaptive. So you can take away points. Extremely adaptive. Natural sociologists. Rapid breeding mushrooms. <laughs> Epic. Or very strong mushroom. Lol. Uh, I tell you what. I really like the look of the... What was it? The intelligent ones. Yeah. We're going to be a really intelligent space mushroom. Sweet. Now we want to be male, I think. And what can we call our starting ruler? Uh... Red Top? Red Top the Space Mushroom is our leader. That'll do. I like that. And we can change the color of him as well. What color looks good? Kind of like the purple. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the purple. That looks pretty sweet. Now we can name our home world. Oh dear. What on earth should we call this? Mushroom Land. <laughs> I don't know. Mushroom. Mushroom. Sex planet. No, you can't have that, Riley. Mushroom Tropia? Mush Mushtropia. Yes, I like that. And the star name. I'm just going to call it the Sun. Or Sol. We call it Sol. No, Sun. And starting solar system. So we can choose where we want to stand. So we could uh, where we can start. So we can start with the Deneb system, random, or Sol system. I'm going to go with the Sol system because it's kind of like... You know, we'll recognize the planets and stuff. We can rename pretty much everything in the game, so that's kind of cool. And we can start off uh, at whatever type of world we want. See, let's just go through these. Desert preference, tropical preference. That would be kind of cool. Or an ocean world. Mushrooms living in the ocean. Mushrooms are kind of grow in, like, humid, sort of wet areas, don't they? So a tropical world kind of suits us, I think. We'll go for the... Mam no, we'll go for the fungoid sea. And here we go. So now we can spend points on our government and ethics. And this modifies things like, as you can see here, our army damage, our alliance influence cost, rivalry influence gains. Now, I don't know everything about this game, so anything you, um, you guys want to um, explain to me would be great. But I'm just going to go through at my own pace, and uh, hopefully in this episode we'll be seeing some action as well. But let's have a look. So, indirect democracy we can choose from. A plutocratic oligarchy. Or a despotic empire. Each ruler can build an oversized military station. Nah. I'm not sure if I want to be too militaristic. Because I don't really know how combat and everything works yet. Indirect democracy gives us... Lead <coughs> excuse me. Leader skill levels plus one. 
and leader, re leader recruitment cost minus 10. I'm not quite sure what difference all of those makes, so I'm probably going to choose that. Uh, ah, then we need to choose our ethics points and stuff. Okay, so yeah. Fanatic militarist. Let's start off in the center. Militarist xenophobe. Gives us alien slavery tolerance plus 50. Ooh. Individualist, materialist, pacifist, xenophile, xenophobia minus 10. Well, I guess if we're a space mushroom, then we're kind of tolerant, wouldn't you think? Or should we be spiritualistic? Uh, yeah, let's be spiritualistic ones. They look kind of cool. And then we get to choose one of these outer ones. So fanatic militarist, fanatic xenophobe. I think we'll go for the happiness thing. Can we just click that? How do we add these? How do we add these so we spend these ethics points? I don't really know, you know. Ah, there we go, like so. So we have to, we can't choose fanatic spiritualist and spiritualist. Okay, so we'll be a spiritualist and food consumption goes down if we're collectivists. Uh, I think I will go for, let's have some military stuff in there. So yeah, fanatic militarist, we'll go with that. So that's spent our points. And the Empire name. Oh, now we can get ex we can get to experimental with this. Uh, denizens, I know, denizens, oh, not fenizens, denizens of Mushtropia. I like that name a lot. I don't know what I should put here. Mushies. <laughs> our adjective will be mushies. <laughs> oh, cool. And we can choose our flag. Epic. What kind of flag do we want? Well, seen as I'm Reinstein, I kind of want something that looks a little science-y if they've got one. There, like that one. Yeah. That looks pretty sweet. Now we can choose like a... We can choose like a pattern to go in the background. That looks kind of cool. I'll go with that. Now, our starting weapons. Here we get exciting. So we can have projectile weapons, missile weapons, or energy weapons. So energy weapons sound kind of cool. These directed energy weapons emit focused laser beams at their targets. They are effective at medium to close range, largely ignoring the bulk of enemy armor or missile weapons. What kind of weapon do you think a mushroom would use? Probably not any mushroom. So I'm going to go with the missile weapons. I know what they do, and that's all good. So we've also got the way we're going to travel in the world now. Since warp travel is uh, recommended for new players, I think I'm going to go with that. But there's some, also some cool uh, choices here. Wormhole travel and hyperspace travel. I'm going to go with the warp travel anyway. And our ships. Yeah, let's make them look like these fungoid ships. They look badass. All right, there we go. We have created the denizens of Mustropia. Mustropia. Hey, I don't want to... I don't want to put that. Let's change that quickly. Mushtropia. We must make sure everything's right. Denizens of Mushtropia safe successfully. Yay. Done. All right. Now we can choose the game details. So galaxy size. You can see you can start off with tiny, small, medium, large, or huge. I'm going to stick with the medium uh, and the galaxy shape. Elliptical, spiral. I'm going to go with the spiral. AI empires are 17. That should be fine. Advanced AI starts. Difficulty normal. Yeah, that looks good. Iron Man mode. Hell no. I, I Probably I could do with the Iron Man because it's not like I'm going to save scum or anything, but you never know. All right. So what does it say? In the Aeon, since the first primitive space mushroom communities took shape in the dense jungles of Mushtropia, our civilization has spread and prospered. We were driven forward by steady scientific progress and armed conflicts between nation states became increasingly rare. The framework for a global democratic government was eventually laid, and when the last holdouts voluntarily joined, we stood united as a single nation of mushrooms. <laughs> now, after the successful creation of several experimental subspace fields, the finest minds of the denizens of Mustropia have finished development of the first warp drives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Begin. Good day, Mr. President. All right. I am Veer, a prototype synthetic intelligence. My job is to offer advice and assistance as we seek our destiny among the stars. All right. Now, thank you, Veer. That's uh, very important stuff you're telling me there. What I'm going to set him to is just tips only because I've kind of done the tutorial. I, I know mostly what I'm doing-ish. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, tips only. Well. Thank you. I will provide tips 
explaining only basic functions and tools as you explore them. All right, thank you, Veer. Now, you can see at the moment, the game is paused. Now, I'm going to take you through the screen also, uh, and the icons that are in it, just for myself as much as uh, you as well. Now, if I click on this top left thing, the it goes to the government screen. with information regarding our empire and its government. Here, we can see our ruler and any related effects. Thank you, Veer. Don't show again. All right, so as we can see here, we've got a picture of our dude. You can see the ruler traits that we um, gave him, the governing ethics. So the ruler traits, just remind ourselves, are industrialists. So we get plus 10% minerals and warlike. So ship costs are reduced and army costs are reduced. So we've got naval capacity of 12, edict cost, edict duration. That's all nonsense. But you've got little tabs along the bottom here. Now you can click the budget on budget. Tab tallies our empire's monthly income and expenses in energy credits. Thank you, Veer. That's exactly Veer, what I was going to say. Bye, Veer. Yeah. So basically, it shows you what your income is that you're earning from um, energy credits and minerals and influence. I'm not quite sure how you gain that, um, but yeah. And then you've got your expenses as well. So you can see we've got a balance of plus 2.64 energy credits right now. Um, the policies tab covers government policies as well as empire-wide edicts, practices that can be enforced by spending some of our influence. Ah, thank you. That was quite helpful, Veer. Right, so yeah, up here you can choose your policies and you can change them from static or semi-static. Okay, so a, a static war economy is unaffected by the vagaries of war. The current war score has no effects on production times or costs. Now, if we change it to semi-static, it allows the seizure... seizure of limited assets from the private sector for the sake of survival during defensive wars, with a corresponding loss of efficiency while winning offensive wars. I'm going to leave that. In fact, I'm going to leave all of the policies for now because I'm not too familiar with what any of that does. The demographics tab tracks the makeup and spread of our empire's populace. There we go. Thank you, Veer. You are very helpful. All right, let's go on to the next thing. So, the click empire on Empire. Screen lists the planets of our empire with leaders and the different factions in separate tabs. It also lets us create and manage sectors. Roger that, thank you. So as we can see, we've got our first planet listed here, Mushtropia, and it shows you how much food surplus we've got, the planet size, it's currently at 16, uh, energy credits, minerals, influence, all that good stuff. Now you can click on this next tab, and go to the leaders. This tab lets us hire, dismiss, and assign idle governors, scientists, admirals, and generals. That's right, Veer. Thank you. So we can assign people if they're not doing anything. As you can see, if you look here where it says busy governing Mustropia, that's Aaron Higgins. Lovely. He's our uh, governor. Aaron Higgins? We must rename him. I think I think I should be Reinstein of the Mustropians, don't you think? Reinstein of the Mustropians. Sounds kind of cool. Um, and then we've got some scientists, and we haven't got any admirals yet, so I'm going to go ahead and recruit one. Now, if anyone wants to rename any of these people, just get in touch with the co by the comment section, and I'll gladly rename them. That'd be cool, naming them after you guys. I like to do that a lot, as you've seen in my other playthroughs like RimWorld. Now, so, we've got different ages for these leaders, and they've all got the same skill. They've got diff Have they got different traits? Yeah, adaptable, so that means... He gains leadership experience plus 15. Very good. This one's got evasion plus 10%. And this one's got leader experience gain plus 15 as well. So I'm going to go ahead with one of these experienced ones. Should we go with Hu Cheng? Hu Cheng is your name for now, sir. And I don't know if we need any generals just yet. Does it tell you when we need them? Let's hope it does. Right, next screen is In the contact, contact screen. We see a detail. Thank you, Veer. Basically, these are species that we've made contact with. The species tab so it's just listing our species right now. Kind of want to get into the game. You've got a ship designer, so you can make your own different type empire of ship. Are designed here. I'm you. not quite sure how to use that yet, so I uh, could do with some tips on that. Situation log is pretty cool. The situation log displays a list of... The victory screen lists certain conditions that we can strive to fulfill to ensure that the legacy of our star nation will endure for as long as there is intelligent life in the galaxy. I see. So there seems to be two types of victory we can aim for. Win the game by owning 40% of all colonizable planets, or conquest victory. Win the game by conquering or subjugating all other empires. Wow. So the best we can do is own 40% of all colonizable planets. Holy crap. Well, good luck me. 
Next up, we've got our technology. technology this is where we can... This is where we will be directing our research efforts. Thank you, Veer. Yeah, basically, when you click on one of these, so you can have three running at once. You can have your physics research going, your society research, and your engineering research. If I go to physics, as you can see, this guy's called Dominic Katz. Like I said, we can rename him if we want to. Um, so just let me know. Um... Yeah, so if I click select research, you get a choice of three. Every time you research one, you get another choice of three. So what do we want to begin with? Orbital energy conversion, global energy management, or energy storage capacity. I think I'm going to go for the solar panel network. So orbital energy conversion, that sounds kind of cool. Power is important. If we run out of power, then probably we're going to die. I have no idea. Next up, our society research is being managed by Muchumba on Watagwew. Hopefully I did that fine, the pronunciation there. Anyway, in terms of society research, what can we get? We can get New Worlds Protocol. So that unlocks ship type colony ship. I don't even need to look at the other ones. I know we're going to need colony ships, so we need to research that first. If you want, Essentially, it's a bit like civilization. We can just go around, use our colony ships, sort of start a new city. It would be in civilization, but it's a new planet on here. Um, engineering. So next up, what can we research in here? An ion thruster. I don't think we need that right now. A defense platform. Probably don't need that right now either, unless we get a really bad start. So I'm going to go for engineering facility one. So that should improve the speed at which we can build stuff, I imagine. I don't know. Anyway, so if I unpause it now. Actually, no, let's leave it pause for a second and zoom in on our home planet. There is Mushtropia. Look at it. It looks absolutely gorgeous. That's the extent to which you can zoom in right there. But it look, I just like it. I like the look of the graphics and stuff. Now we've got loads of ships. So we've got our construction ship, the Grand Jaeger here. Uh, we've got a science ship. The construction ship, obviously, we can use that to go around and build stuff in orbit. So you can build mining stations, research stations, etc. The science ship is what we this need. Our we ship, need it to go and survey, survey different areas of this solar system or, yeah, solar system. So, if I click on this, survey, and then click on, let's say, let's go to Mars first. And you can see it lays out a path. So basically what it's going to do is go around this whole solar system uh, with recognizable planets, thank God. Look, we've got Uranus, Saturn, Titan. Triton, Neptune. They haven't got Pluto. Poor old Pluto got left out. But uh, nevertheless, there we go. So that's going to survey all these planets. And what that's going to do is show me what resources are available to be mined and stuff. Now we've got our military power ship, which is, these are all our little, um, basically our attackers or our defenders, whatever you may be. There are soldiers, if you will. And we've got a spaceport the here. spaceport tab is where we view orbiting fleets build new ships, and upgrade the station itself. If a planet has no spaceport, we can order the construction of one, if we have the necessary resources. Thank you, Veer. All right, let's unpause the game and see what crops up. So basically, you, I'm now playing at normal speed. I can increase it to faster or fastest if I want. Go all the way up there. But I'm just going to leave it on normal speed right now and take a little look at my little science ship. There he goes. He's surveying Mars, checking to see if it's got any available resources. And over there on the right, you can see the little progress bar. So he's now completed it. And it's basically a barren world. I can click on it and it's just got nothing. We can't mine it. We can't do anything. So it's pretty much useless. Where is our science ship off to next? He is going to Juno. Wow, Juno. Cool. And now that's popped up. So you can see that's now got minerals. What we can start to uh, mine. So I need to click on my construction this ship. This is our construction yes, ship. Yes, thank you, Veer. And uh, click on... I want to click on build mining station. Now you can see it's going to have a monthly maintenance cost of one energy. So I need to be mindful that I'm not running into negative energy. Um, let's go over here and begin... Begin to build a mining station. There we go. Right click and build mining station. So where is my science ship off to now? He is surveying Luna. So what's Luna? Luna's like the little moon. I guess that would be the equivalent of Earth's moon. Cool. So that may have some more resources as well. Now our construction ship. He's off to build the mining thing. And I don't know quite what to do with my military fleets. Um, but yeah, if I show you something else as well. If you press M... 
you can zoom out and see all the different star systems that are around. So we've got Mitten over here, Lavaskio, Barnard Star, and Alpha Centauri, which if you're a fan of space, you'll know that's our closest celestial cousin in the uh, universe. So we can go over there and take a little look by clicking on this. Now, they've got really interestingly named uh, planets here, haven't they? Alpha Centauri 1 through 6, I believe there is, or 1 through 5. Not that interesting, but that is a good place to send my research ship after we've finished surveying our home region. Now our science ship... Oh cool! If I just move over here you can see the status and it where it's going to go next. So it's finished Mercury, now it's going on to Pallas. Then it's going to go to Uranus. So has Mercury not got any resources either? Look at that, that looks pretty sweet. <laughs> I like the graphics on this, it's pretty... Pretty nice. Wow, look at Jupiter. The big beast of the solar system. Alright, not much is happening. Now, I can click on Mustropia, actually. And um, one good thing that I learnt last night what to do is if you click on Surface, Here we see a visual representation of this you've got little boxes which have basically got blocks around them. And I think that means that they're not in use. So all of these boxes are in use basically producing food, science, um, what's this, influence, and uh, yeah, basically food, science, and money, and stuff like that. Now these, hold on a minute, let's just pause it. These ones with the little um, box around the edge, they need to be cleared in order to become sort of workable tiles. So I'm going to clear this one out of the way, but it does cost quite a bit of resources. You can see my energy is now down to 8 plus 1. That sucks! All right, we just got a notification pop up. Fleet order finished. Grand Jaeger completed the construction of a mining station in orbit of Juno. Sweet, so we now got our little mining station. Is there any other resources that we can see that our ship has found yet? Not really. Science ship, you are doing badly. There's Uranus or Uranus. Ha 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 Get it? Um, what else can I show you? Uh, yeah, here's our little ship, so let's take a little look at our military vehicles. I don't know what to do with these early on, like, I don't really... Military fleets are used to protect. I don't really want to do too much with them. I guess I could, like, explore... Let's go into Alpha Centauri, maybe. And then, that way, we can see if there's, like, any dangers through there, I guess, before we send our science ship through there. Um, but in two hours play last night, I didn't actually get any combat for myself. I did see some combat. But uh, we weren't involved in any combat. So, yeah. Alright, now there's our little ships. They're flying off towards Bunard Star. If I press M, you, there you go. You can see him going over to Alpha Centauri. And there we go. Looks like there's not a lot going on in here. So we'll just make our way across. Just to make sure everything's peaceful in this region. Hope there's no trouble being caused. Construction complete. Hey, Mustropia has finished its surface construction queue. Sweet. Now, if I click go ho go to home, zoom in on Mustropia, click on surface, you can see this region now is available to be worked. Um, it's currently, currently, it will generate engineering research points. But I don't think anyone's working in it because you haven't got any little character standing in there. So that's the same for these little regions as well. I think we need to wait for some more resources. So if I was, if I was, we have found an anomaly. Ooh, hold on a minute. From time to time, our science ships will discover strange things while surveying worlds. These can be researched by scientists, but be certain their skills are up to the task. Okie dokie, cool. So we've got an anomaly. So our science ships can investigate those. What does it do though? Does it give us, if we, maybe it gives us the opportunity to like get advanced technologies and stuff like that. Um, so anomaly level one, what does that say? The level of an anomaly affects the failure risk. If the scientist skill level is higher than the anomaly level, the risk of failure is reduced and vice versa. That makes sense. So our failure risk is 0%. And during the survey of our home system, we found something on Callisto that did not match earlier observations made from our home world. So we can leave it, we can change scientist, or we can research it. Well, we're going to research it because I want to. Now, I just wanted to see if I could build something on this planet Some tile. Some may cause adjacency effects to other buildings in neighboring tiles. Let us take this into consideration when constructing new facilities. Oh, I see. So I can build 
if I build like a planet, a power plant, I mean, here, in this one, because it's adjacent to another power plant, it'll give me adjacency bonuses, I think. So can I click on that? There we go. So that's now going to be constructed. You can see finished in time. So it's like 180 seconds, I guess that is. And that will help us generate more power. I think we're going to need more power. Hold on a second. I think we're going to need more power so that um, obviously we can build more and more stuff and more more ships and stuff. Now, where is my construction ship? Mining stations are used to extract the minerals and strategic. There he is. There's our construction ship. It looks like Jupiter has. What is that? Engineering research. He's used to research new technologies. So we. I guess we'll start with building a research station. Although whether that's going to make any difference on Jupiter, I'm not sure because. It doesn't have these little... Now, hold on. Yeah, we're building a research station. Okay, that makes sense. So we're going to get plus three once we've built that. That will give us plus eight in total of our engineering research. You can tell I haven't played this much. <laughs> I'm really trying to make sense of it. I hope I'm making it interesting enough for you guys. I apologize if I'm not. Um, ooh. Secrets at the doorstep. We found a natural formation on Callisto, stunning in its geometrical perfection. This is surely a divine sign, making our way out towards the stars. We should continue to investigate these sorts of anomalies whenever we get the chance. It will most assuredly grant us new knowledge and technology. Praised be the divine. <laughs> I think we believe in like some sort of weird god. What would our mushroom god be anyway? Oh yes, situation log. Ah, nothing's really popped up there apart from those. Okay. Now, where's our science ship? You're still surveying stuff, are you? Yeah, so it looks like there's lots of uh, resources we can be gathering from our local star system here. Venus has some uh, minerals that can be collected. So does Ceres. Our construction ship is nearly finished building, so... I guess since he's over here, we should start building something around Callisto then. That would make sense. So let's build a Construction mining complete. station there. Although we are running quite low on minerals, but uh, obviously we need them anyway. Negative balance. We are losing energy credits each month. Build more power plants. No! What happens if we run out of energy? Obviously stuff stops working. Inactive buildings. At least one of our planetary buildings is missing something that is required for it to function. <gasps> no! This one. So I can... Can I move someone so that, like, they will work on that? Let's see. Can I move this guy? Yeah, now it works. All right, sweet. So now we've got a surplus of energy. And if we go to planet summary, we've still got a surplus of three food. I obviously moved him from a food from a farm to, uh, to our new place, but that should be fine. Um, fleet order finished. Yep, yeah, we know about that. Mustropia has finished its surface construction queue. We know about that too. Brilliant. Side ship, where are you? Double click. I'm off to see the wizard. The wonderful wizard of Oz now. What did we do with our ships? There we go. Kind of want to bring them home. You never know. In you come, shippies. Yeah, look, there's tons of resources to be gathered now. I see... I'm noticing the difference now. So once we've started to gather the resources, the little number under it system turns green. Complete. Hey, we finished surveying the whole of the sun system. Yes. All right, sign ship. No time to waste. You must go and survey Alpha Centauri. Thank you. Right click to dismiss. And construction ship. Yeah, so basically I guess it's like a race against time to gather as much resources as you can. Oh, let's slow that down. Uh, where are we? Grand Jaeger ship. Let's go to Europa next. Ah, we can't build a mining station yet. We need more. We need more of these uh, minerals. Okay. I'm just getting an idea of what we need here. So if I do build another mining station, that will mean I'm at... I'm at null in my energy surplus. It will go down to plus zero. Okie dokie. No problem. So we're we're doing quite well so far, I think. We don't seem to have encountered any issues. First episode is rather lovely. I think I'm going to leave the first episode there, guys. Um, 
it's pretty damn cool. I, I do hope you're enjoying it. Obviously, it's not for everyone. There's not a whole bunch of action. Um, but I really, I really want to make this a big series on my channel. So let's just read this before I go anyway. The Grand, the discovery of alien life. Oh yeah, we found some aliens. The Grand Equinox has made a startling find on Alpha Centauri 4. The planet is teeming with alien life for the first time in history. We have encountered life forms that did not originate on Mustropia. Whoa, can you imagine if that happened in real life? They're talking about Europa, possibly a moon of Jupiter having life? Maybe, who knows. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believe we are alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Alpha Centauri 4 are sentient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. <gasps> we may not be alone out here. Sweet. So where was that? That was in here, wasn't it? Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri 4. There it is. Cool. There's a alien beings on here somewhere. I can see you. I'm watching you from above. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching my first episode. I hope you find, uh, find it interesting and want to join me for the second episode. Until then, keep wearing your safety goggles, guys. Take care. Goodbye.